Hey there friends, how's it going? I'm Ben Snow and in this video we're going to take an even closer look at the four Hogwarts houses. I am so thrilled that we're finally able to see how the developers depicted the entrances to each common rooms. But I'm even more excited with the fact that they actually took liberty to expand upon what we've seen before and create something new and unique. Having both Gryffindor and Slytherin common rooms well established in the films and video games, the developers had a tough job matching up to the fans' expectations. They had to add and expand or, in case with Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff common rooms, create from scratch while making sure they keep the essence of each house so they feel like they belong in Hogwarts. And I think they absolutely nailed it. By following vivid descriptions from the books, each common room has a different personality with their own distinct architecture, decor features, and entrances. But at the same time, they all feel like they are part of Hogwarts. But all right, let's take a closer look at each and every one of them, starting with Gryffindor Common Room. Obviously, the developers had lots of reference material to work with when it came to Gryffindor. We've seen every aspect of this dormitory, and while respecting the original design by Stuart Craig, they have expanded the layout of the common rooms and took inspiration from the books. The most notable difference is the size, something that is seen throughout the entire castle. Everything feels bigger and more spacious, with more room to move around and explore. And the common room right away screams Gryffindor, with giant crests hanging above the fireplace, warm red-colored tapestry on the walls, numerous picture frames, wood flooring, wooden stairs that I'm sure make creaking sounds, and loads, loads of carpets. The entrance to the common room has been slightly reimagined to reflect how it was described in the books by adding a circular hole behind a portrait of the fat lady located on the seventh floor corridor, just as depicted in the first two Harry Potter movies, where right before the portrait there is a long hallway, while in the rest of the movies the entrance to the Gryffindor common room was right from the grand staircase. We've got some additional space added in the common area with this interactable globe and a chest. Wonder what's in it? The dorm area has seen some expansions as well, which I'm so happy about because we will now finally see where the rest of the Gryffindorians sleep. As you will see in a little bit, some common rooms have received a dedicated spot for Quidditch with trophies hanging on the walls. There's even a Quidditch player on this beautiful glass mosaic. Here we also have a little task board with some Quidditch posters pinned to it, as well as a drawing of an owlery. Now, the poster of Chudley Cannons has number 21 on it, which signifies their 21st win in the League Cup of 1892. So, if this isn't a mistake, that means we will spend at least two years in Hogwarts, because in the shot at the beginning of the game, we have a date in the Daily Prophet, 1890. Just like overall, this common room feels so warm and cozy. I just can't wait to hang out by its fireplace or play with those self-shuffling cards. Explode in Snap, for example. Next we have Ravenclaw. I absolutely love this common room. It feels so elegant and sophisticated. It's in the architecture and the design of this room. Tall arches and sharp edges in the corners remind me of the Gothic motives. Located in one of the tallest towers, the entrance to the common room is behind a door with a giant knocker in the shape of an eagle, where you'll have to solve a riddle when entering. There is a statue of Rowena Ravenclaw at the top of the staircase, which is facing the main common area, divided into two rooms with sofas, tables and different music instruments in the first, and a giant fireplace in the second with more resting areas. In the arch between the two rooms, there's the flu network flame that we'll use to fast travel, and a similar looking chest like we've seen in Gryffindor's common room. My curiosity is growing about the purpose of this chest, but I'll get back to it in a little bit. Upstairs, there's another big area that possibly serves as a study room, based on the books piled up on the floors and windows, as well as numerous writing desks. Just like we saw in the previous common room, there's a drawing of an owlery, then perhaps that could be linked to a mission that we'll do regardless of the house we're sorted in. 
There is a remarkable presence of astronomical tools and objects around the common room that you could interact with. There is even a celestial map depicted on the ceilings and the floors of the common area. Knowing that we will be taking astronomy lessons, perhaps being in Ravenclaw could benefit our advances in that field. And I just have to point out that how vivid and intricate those patterns are. The quality has grown a lot since the gameplay trailer. Also, if you look closer here, these knights have changed their position once we approach them. It seems as though they're blocking our way to a possibly restricted area. Next we have Slytherin. Now this common room looks absolutely massive. Again, it has its own personality and design. The tall ceilings, wide stone staircases, and the lack of carpets on the marble floors makes it seem like it is much cooler in this room. And rightfully so, considering Slytherin's common room is located underneath the Black Lake. Once again, the developers have expanded the design of this common room from how it was depicted in the Chamber of Secrets while keeping the same atmosphere. We have a big presence of skeletons and skulls around the common area. Here, there is even a glass case with what looks like a mini mermaid. <laughs> and these marble columns and the dim bluish light coming from the windows give this common room a darker vibe. And that's exactly what I like about this common room. I am absolutely looking forward to hanging out here, playing wizard chess or just exploring the long corridors and admiring the water features that are intricately embedded here. Also just like the rest of the common rooms, this one has a unique entrance which features a vanishing door behind the Slytherin body of an enormous stone serpent. And lastly, we have Hufflepuff. And once again, this common room is nothing like the other ones. Located in the basements right next to the kitchens, it has more of an earthy tone to it. It definitely looks like the Hobbiton from The Lord of the Rings, thanks to the rounded door frames, low ceilings, and the overall architectural style of this common room. Again, I really like how considerate the developers were of the fact that there are more than just six students in each house by providing enough bedrooms for everyone. As we are in the basements, there's a notable lack of windows in most of the common areas. Yet this space is filled with sunlight. And combined with numerous plants hanging from the ceiling and shrubs growing on the walls, it makes it seem so cozy in here. Like, I just want to sit in that armchair, just like her, to simply enjoy all of this beauty and procrastinate while watching the watering can, tending all the cacti and the rest of the plants. By the way, perhaps being a Hufflepuff might help us advance in our Herbology studies. Also, I love the fact that there is a ghost just hanging out over here by the Squidditch area, possibly Fat Friar. Here by the entrance, there's another ghostly apparition in front of the barrels. Or it could be also a torn apart book that we have to interact with and possibly fix. And again, we have this chest like we've seen before. It seems like each house will have one of those. And since it's located near the flu network flame, it makes me think that's where we will have quick access to our inventory. But you let me know what you think this is. But just like every other common room, it is full of character and personality. And most importantly, they all feel alive, with portraits and different magical objects moving and doing their own thing, occasional ghosts floating by and NPCs that are minding their own business, waiting to be bothered by us, asking questions or playing different minigames. And the attention to all the details from the textures on the walls and objects to lighting and styling of the common rooms makes them feel authentic and realistic. By the way, I wonder if we're gonna have ray tracing mode in the game. But I think the developers did an amazing job here and I'm happy they took the extra time to finish everything up because it shows with every new material they release. Well, I can't wait to see what else they're gonna show us until the launch of Hogwarts Legacy. And if you haven't seen it yet, here's a collection of different clips you might find interesting. And here are some other videos I made for you. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.